I was in the classroom last week observing a lesson, and the teacher was talking about letterboxes. And she said, if you see the letters ER on a letterbox, that stands for Elizabeth Regina, Queen Elizabeth. So if you saw, saw the letters GR on a letterbox, what would that stand for? And a little girl at the back shot her hand up and she called out, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and you know, that highlighted for me the reality gap that exists in our school between what we teach students in our classrooms and what goes on in the real world outside the classroom gate. And I think this reality gap is one of the biggest problems facing education today. You see, there was a poll that took place a few years ago, and they asked students, what are the three things you do most commonly in your classrooms? And the top reply was, we copy from a book or a board. And the bottom reply was, we learn things that are relevant to the real world. Now, let me put this to the test. Um, if you have written an essay in the last month, please raise your hand. And if you're still involved in education and you've written an essay, put your hand down. No one has their hand up. In a room full of creative geniuses, no one is doing something that we ask our young people to do every single week. And so my concern is that what we do in our schools is what I call dress rehearsal learning. And what I'm trying to do every day with my students is not dress rehearsal learning, it's live performance learning, learning for the real world. And let me say two things that we need to do to make our learning live performance. First of all, we need to dare to give our young people some choice, some say in what or how they learn. And secondly, we need to make that learning connect with the real world outside the classroom door. If we don't do that, we're going to have a generation of young people who are detached from reality and don't feel they can change the world around them. Now, let me give you a simple model for how we might do this. You see, the majority of learning today takes place in the top left-hand square. It's teacher-led and classroom-based. And what we're trying to do is move learning down into the bottom right-hand square so that it's student-led and community-based, based in the real world. Let me give you just a small example of what we're doing with our students to illustrate this. Last term, some students came up to me and they said, Mr. Patterson, we're interested in, in endangered animals. We're passionate about endangered animals. So I said, come on, let's sit down and we'll make a plan for this. And we, what we did was we planned to create a project that would establish Britain's very first Endangered Animals Day. That is what I mean by learning that is student-led and community-based. And then the students realized that if we want to do this, we have to develop some knowledge and skills to make this happen. And so they set about organizing themselves to become a, a perfect uh, flash mob students. And they set about learning how to do uh, publicity stunts. And they set about writing press releases, not to put in their folders, but to actually send to the press and draw attention to their issue. And they set about becoming powerful public speakers. Not so they could practice with their peers, but so that they can invite their local member of parliament into school and speak to him and persuade him of the value of their ideas. And today they're writing and emailing and phoning everybody from politicians to pop musicians to try and build support for this idea. That's what Learning for Real is all about. And there's three big benefits of this approach. Number one, it passes what I call the M&M test. It's meaningful and it's manageable. I'm just an ordinary teacher, I teach in an ordinary school, but I think this is something that every teacher in every school can and should do. Number two, when you take this approach and make learning real, it has a powerful impact on motivation. Because when you have a say in what you learn, and when you can see that it's linked and relevant to the real world, your engagement with it takes off. And we don't talk about motivation enough in our classrooms. I heard the story recently of a government inspector and he went into a school to, to observe some lessons and he was sat at the back. Lesson carried on, no comments were made. Teacher thought she'd done a great job. And then just as the students were filing out the classroom, he stopped one boy and he said, now can you tell me, what was that lesson all about? And the boy goes, ah, don't worry, I wasn't listening either. <laughs> and... Um, the, the third benefit of making learning real, the third benefit of making learning real is that it empowers young people as agents of change. Young people who can identify problems in their, solution, in their community and bring solutions to those problems. It gives them the knowledge, the skills, and the confidence to change the world around them. You know, I heard a story of a young girl and she said to her mum, mum, what's the difference between ignorance and indifference? Mum replied, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and <laughs> what learning for real really does is it helps young people to know, but more importantly, it helps them to care and to care enough to change the world around them. And I believe that is what education is all about. Thank you.